Welcome to the American Dream. I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and today we're going to take you to Seattle, one of the most beautiful cities on the planet. We're going to show you the real estate, the lifestyle, and the culture from top professionals all across the market. Let's get this show started right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted. I got it. These are stories for you and by you. City in West Seattle, a dog groomer and doggy daycare. I am so excited for our guest today. It's Desmond Hansen, and he's a local artist, does traffic signal boxes and murals. Let's go meet him. Thanks for joining us. Amazingly talented artist. Um, so in the background, we have um, one of your new murals that you did. Um, how long did it take you to do this one? Um, this one took me uh, roughly about four to five days and about 20 hours. Most people will know you from your street art, um, the traffic signal boxes that you do, the murals. Um, how did you get your start on doing the traffic signal boxes? Well, I was starting to feel a little bit stagnant and wanted to paint some murals and decided after seeing a few of these boxes in my neighborhood pretty demolished and, and vandalized. Probably about the perfect size for like a, a portrait of somebody. Mm -hmm. And so that idea kind of blossomed in my head and I kind of took it upon myself to create some designs and then approach SDOT about um, painting the boxes. And at first they thought I was a little bit crazy <laughs> and they were apprehensive, um, but now you can see they, they have faith in what I'm doing. How many of them do you have now? I have 60, give or take, some that have been vandalized and aren't really even there anymore because of how much vandalism I've gotten on them. Tell me about your process for choosing who goes on the um, traffic signal boxes. Um, so it's, it's a wide range of stuff. Um, sometimes the community will come at me with a proposal for like, like in the central district, I did um, I think 10 boxes for them and they all came up with the, um, the themes for them and we put our heads together to design them. Um, the ones in West Seattle that I started with were kind of a combination of my childhood influences, um, growing up in the grunge era of rock and roll and that being pretty influential on me being a kid. And mm -hmm. So, how did you get your start um, as an artist? Um, as an artist, I used to scribble and, you know, do comic books with my friends and stuff. And then we, in high school, we would pass each other's sketchbooks around to each other in between classes, try to impress each other. From there, a couple of high school friends of mine, we, we all apprenticed at this tattoo shop. Oh, cool. And when mural work would come through the door or um, like commissions for canvas art and stuff, I would jump at those opportunities. And so from there, murals were kind of like a starting point for me and aerosol art. So you have some traffic signal boxes in this area. Yeah, pretty okay. close. Let's go check them out. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for taking us through and, and showing us all your amazing murals throughout the city. It's, it's great and it adds so much love and, and community to, to Seattle. So thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the city of Shoreline, Washington. I'm Ann Nordling and this is the American Dream. The city of Shoreline is just on the northern border of Seattle and reaches all the way into Snohomish County. 
It became a city in 1995. Until then, it actually had a Seattle address. I'm currently standing on the Inner Urban Trail, which reaches to downtown Seattle and all the way into Snohomish County. It's bikeable, walkable, and commutable. It's centrally located in the middle of Shoreline, as is this new development going on behind me. We're gonna meet with Jameis Twilliam, who's the project lead for this development, and find out all about it. Let's visit with him now. So we're currently at the former Sears and Roebuck property with Jameis William from Merlone Geyer Partners, and he's gonna tell us all about this exciting new development. Thanks, Ann. Um, yeah, so we're here in Shoreline, and there's some transformative things that are happening. The city has been planning for a large redevelopment of this property for a long time. We own 17 acres. It's a wow. 300,000 square foot former Sears box, and uh, we as a company, we've redeveloped about 18 different Sears boxes over the, the years, That's and amazing. it's they all take their own different shape, kind of depending on where we, you know, where it sits in the community. And you know, early on when we acquired the property, we reached out to Shoreline. Some people may recall we got about 6,000 responses from this outreach effort, and people told us they needed more restaurants, more housing, more places to gather. And so that's what we've done. We've created a, a mixed-use community that will tie into Central Market, it'll tie into the Marshalls and the area to the north, and then there's some new apartments across Westminster Way that will all kind of blend together to create a new sense of place here in Shoreline. It feels like it's gonna be a true community hub, and I'm, I'm so excited being a Shoreliner that that's happening. So the entire project, do you think, will take several years, or what is the kind yeah. of the window of time. Yeah, the, the intention was that it would be a phased project, you know, with the first phase of, of multifamily will be about 400 units. So it'll be comparable to the size of the new project that was just finished across the street behind us. Um, and it takes a while to build that scale of project and to lease it up before you start the next one. And so um, it'll be several years as the whole project is built out, but there'll always be a connection between the, the Marshall's portion of the shopping center and Central Market. We're in fact, we're gonna put in a new street that will connect those two. Cool. So, yeah. Well, thank you, James. That's so exciting. As a shore liner, I have to thank you because we need restaurants. You're welcome. And, and we are leasing. So um, if anyone's, you know, has a, a restaurant concept that they're, they would love to see here, you know, you put a bug in the ear of the, the different restaurateurs in town, we're, we're open to talking to them. I, I don't have any on speed dial, but I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you so much for You're your time. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So like the rest of the area, Shoreline's changing. I'm so excited about this new development. I intend to come here all the time. I live so close. I'm Ann Nordling. Thank you so much for visiting the American Dream, and we'll see you next time. Imagine living in a building that captured not only Puget Sound, but also Lake Union and views of the Space Needle? Well, we are here and it's called Spire in downtown Seattle. This 343 unit building built by Laconia Builders sits at the intersection of Queen Anne, South Lake Union and downtown. You can't ask for a better location than that. When you live in a condo in Seattle, one thing you definitely want is a view. One of the best things about this building is that you get the views of Lake Union with the seaplanes going in and out, but you also get views of the Puget Sounds and the sunsets over the Olympics. The amenities at Spire are some of the best in the city. The rooftop deck has views of Puget Sound, uh, Lake Union, and then also the Space Needle is just huge right in front of you. You're not gonna find that in other buildings.
One of the best things about living in condos is you have all of the amenities. In this building, you have a state-of-the-art gym and the first of its kind robot parking garage. If you're looking for a quiet space to work or a conference room or a space to entertain your friends and family, Spire has it all. Some of these rooms have gorgeous state-of-the-art kitchens where you could have a private dinner or maybe have your own cooking class. The conference rooms are absolutely gorgeous and the workspace is top of the line. We're so happy we were able to show you the Spire building in downtown Seattle. We hope you enjoyed these amazing views of Puget Sound, South Lake Union, and the Space Needle. I'm Brennan Klaus. And I'm Tracy Erickson. And we're the collective group at Compass. Thank you for joining us on American Dream. I'm Steve Kennedy, host of American Dream TV and Selling Seattle. This is one of our new listings this week at 1717 First Avenue North. This structure was originally built in 1907 as an up and down duplex. It feels like there's nothing missing. Filling my cup with some love in the kitchen. Cause I'm so sweet, super so neat, over easy. Kicking in the that good stuff. This listing has great news for first time buyers. You can live on one side and rent out the other, pay half your mortgage. But the best thing about this listing at 1717 First Avenue North is its location on top of Queen Anne Hill. It's literally 30 seconds away from Trader Joe's and all the shops and restaurants on Queen Anne. We've got another listing coming up on Gaylor Street too. Let's go check that one out. Hi, this is Melissa Klinert with the Steve Kennedy team at Compass. Today we're on top of Queen Anne and the sun is shining. We're at a new listing at 350 Gaylor Street, one of the first row house projects that was built here in 2016. We get the opportunity to represent the seller once more. It all starts now. Some of the fantastic features of this urban oasis are the two car garage with electric car charger, the low maintenance planting gardens, and the captivating views from the rooftop deck. Part of urban row house living is maximizing your outdoor space with rooftop decks and expansive views of Elliott Bay and the Seattle Center. We're gonna head to Uptown for a little Irish cheer at T.S. McHugh's. We'd like to wish all the viewers of American Dream TV a happy St. Patrick's Day. With the Steve Kennedy team, we love to celebrate Irish Christmas down at T.S. McHugh's in Lower Queen Anne. Come on inside, let's go have a song and celebrate.
Thanks for joining us on American Dream TV. I'm Steve Kennedy, along with Melissa Klinert and Jen Severchek of the Steve Kennedy team. Next time you're in Seattle, check out T.S. McHugh's on Mercer Street, just around the corner from the Seattle Opera House and Climate Pledge Arena. Happy St. Patty's. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Welcome to American Dream. Today, I can't wait to show you around this beautiful modern home right here on Lake Washington. I wanna show you why Lake Washington is home to so many of Seattle's mega entrepreneurs. This is an amazing home with so many of the latest features. Can't wait to show you. Let me take you inside. Beautiful modern home is 4,100 square feet, five bedrooms and seven baths. It doesn't miss out on a single modern feature. We have these amazing color changing LED lights and one touch cabinets. We are only on the main floor. I can't wait to show you more features. Whether you're looking to make this your dream home or want to make it part of your investment portfolio, this home is amazing. It has two kitchens, making it ideal for multi-generational living. All the bathrooms have stunning tile work, from the elevators to the gas fireplaces, car turntable and automatic blinds. This home has everything you could dream of and more. Thanks for joining me in touring this premium property. You can see from these views why the Pacific Northwest is such a hot spot. I'm Amy Zier. Thanks for joining me on the American Dream. Dream. Today we are in Green Lake and we're going to meet with a luxury green builder. He is going to talk to us today about the standards of work for green built homes as well as we're going to see some examples of his work. I'm your host Beth G. Let's go meet Corey. Hi Corey. Hi. Uh, so you are an amazing luxury green builder. Um, what makes a project green? You know, green building means a lot of different things to a lot of people. Um, and working with like a program uh, such as Built Green, the certification process allows you to kind of pick and choose what would really matter to you uh, to make your po project as green as possible. So that might be energy efficiency, durability, or material selections. Um, and it allows you to pick and choose from those elements uh, to get to a certified project. So what do buyers need to look out for um, when they want to purchase a green built home? The built green certified home is kind of the best way for a customer to go into selecting a home because it is that third party certification that encompasses a lot of different strategies and it doesn't require the homeowner to be the expert. Let's take a look at some of the things, you know, and you can show us a kind of, kind of a couple examples from here and then on your new project as well. Absolutely. 
Just to highlight some of the things we did uh, in thinking through our personal kitchen remodel. Easy one is selecting high efficiency appliances. So we have an induction range. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is actually works off of magnets um, instead of just an electric resistant. It's, it's much more efficient, cooks faster, more like cooking on gas. And just generally when we remodeled the kitchen, trying to think through materials and styles that go with the house. We don't want something that someone else is just gonna tear out in a few years. So we're outside, talk to us about what's going on out here. Sure, uh, so this was a big remodel project. So we got to kind of think about all the elements of sustainability that we wanted in the house, including we have a large solar electric system on this home that helps power our car, does our heating and cooking. Uh, we also collect all the rainwater off of our roof for RainWise, that's with the, which is a City of Seattle incentive program to help uh, collect and maintain stormwater runoff. Yeah, and I think a cool thing about that too is it's kind of a, a myth that it's expensive to go green, right? Because there's the incentive programs and you're like sure. reusing, you're heating your house. and Exactly. It's, it's also about first cost versus life cycle costs. So over the life cycle of that that item, it might actually become cheaper. Well, so let's head off to your new construction project. Sounds good. All right. So this is some of the stuff that is a little harder to see. On this project, we're using a sheathing that has the water membrane uh, pre-applied, uh, which means that we don't have to worry about like perfect insulation in the field. All we have to come through and do is tape the seams and we're good to go. I've also mocked up here an example of a rain screen uh, siding. So rain screen siding is really important because a misconception is that siding actually is waterproof, but we know that water actually gets through siding. So what the rain screen does is it creates a gap behind your siding and that allows for water to freely drain out if it does get through and doesn't affect the structure of the house. So it just has really good long-term durability benefits to the home um, and is kind of a key to what I think is a durable siding system. Thanks for coming along today. Uh, we were with Corey with Biltwell Company. Thank you for showing us Absolutely. all the energy, uh, earth, wind, fire, and, and fun stuff that um, Green Built has in store for us in the future. I'm your host, Beth G, and we'll see you next time on American Dream. Legend Hall of Fame baseball coach Tommy Lasorda once said during the infamous 1979 season there are three different types of baseball players ones that make it happen ones that watch it happen and ones that wake up one day and say what the heck just happened this couldn't be more true right now in real estate I believe this is the best time in the history of the world to invest in real estate the stock market or crypto Today I'm going to introduce to you a great partner of mine in real estate. I'm going to show you how I flip real estate and use the proceeds to fund my investment portfolio. Jake's one of the top real estate agents in Snohomish County. He works with some of the top builders and real estate investors as well. We're gonna talk with Jake about a couple of things that we're doing right now and some of the things that he does with his clients to help them put more money in their pocket when flipping real estate. You know, you've been a big part of me growing my investment portfolio specific to uh, my investments in the stock market. What I'm looking for is another stream of income. So when we flip houses, when you introduce me to a flip, it's an extra $80,000, $100,000, $200,000 that I then take and I redirect and I put into my investment portfolio, which is in the stock market with my financial planners. You have a program in place, because I'm super busy as a branch manager and loan officer and helping my wife with her business. You have a program in place that's just rock solid. We've been able to go in and kind of talk to everybody and figure out their situation. We have a whole bunch of clients that we're kind of going and using a flip house to go in and purchase their duplex, their triplex, their fourplex. Yeah. So let's wrap it up here. Let's go take a look at the house that we got going in Snohomish and let's go show everybody what we are doing in this house in Snohomish in real time so everybody can see.
So one of the first things that you're going to do is you need to establish a relationship with a professional real estate broker, one that has experience working with investors. And when you do that, they have about three criteria that they're gonna focus on. I know yours, but what are they? Yeah. So for our team, what we mainly do is we look for the location. We don't make sure that school districts are good and it's a great commute to work. Okay. The second thing we want to look for is the zoning and the lot size and what is actually allowed for the piece of property. Okay. This one ends up being just under an acre. You can eventually subdivide it into four different lots. We're not okay. going to do that, but it's the option down the road. So okay. the last thing that we're looking for is how ugly the house is. And trust me, this one checks. <laughs> this one's ugly. From a renovation standpoint, Jake, walk us through where we're at. We're obviously taking out a bathroom that was in the middle of the whole living space, living room, and formal dining. We're gonna be taking the master bathroom and we're gonna completely expand it and open it up to make it an absolute gorgeous bathroom. I'm gonna make this absolutely beautiful gourmet kitchen that everybody strives for. Yeah, which is big. I think it's so important that you stay on track in transactions like this. I use a spreadsheet that Jake gave me and it keeps all parties on track. It addresses the acquisition costs, it addresses the renovation costs, and then it addresses the closing costs associated with the sale of the property. Have an idea of what you want to net from the sale of this transaction going in, and this spreadsheet will keep you on track. Don't find yourself 10 years from now waking up, like our friend Tommy Lasorda said, and wondering what the heck just happened. I'm proof, if I can do this, any of you can do this. So if you want more information, if you'd like the spreadsheet that Jake gave me, reach out to me and I'm happy to be a resource. I hope you found today's show valuable and we'll see you next time on The American Dream. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I enjoyed hosting it. This is a real show, not a reality show about real estate, lifestyle, and culture. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can follow the story on social media as well, at The American Dream TV. Until next time, cheers to your American Dream. So the American Dream is a show about lifestyles, culture, neighborhoods, but also real estate. We find the best real estate teams all across the country. Let's just talk quickly about the fact that this used to be a really seasonal community. Historically, this area was a ski town. So keeping in that four season community, I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite spots. The importance of having a person. I think it's really important that you have somebody that you know and trust. Y'all come check it out. And so when you see that balance and that that care and that spirit, people here are friendly. Thank you so much. Thank Tracy. you, Tracy. That's all for today. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream. American Dream TV is a chance for America to hear from small business owners and big dreamers, local leaders and trendsetters, tastemakers and upshakers, the men and women, young and old, in every ethnicity and different perspective of this country we share. We are the American Dream TV, and together we are changing the world of television. Do you know my name?